Friday, November 3rd, 2017, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. I uh, want to look at the markets this morning. It's uh, just gone past 10 a.m. London. Uh, and also, just uh, to let you know, later on today, in, in about two and a half hours, we've got uh, the U.S. job data for October. It will probably, most probably, move the markets in the short term. Personally, I think these statistics are all fabricated uh, and, uh, you know, just another way to manipulate uh, you know, uh, sentiment of the markets uh, by the uh, powers that be, by the governments, by the Treasury, by the Fed, all those people put together. Uh, so, and I want to talk as well um, about this book, uh, one of the snippets in this book, A Pocket Book of Gold, A Survival Manual for Monetary Mayhem by James E. Sinclair. And Peter D. Carling, and I know a lot of you. I, I can, you know, see by the comments, you know, well, what about Bitcoin? What, you know, uh, you know, gold is uh, finished. And I actually like that that people are saying those things because it means that um, it's the time to buy. <laughs> when people hate an asset class uh, like they hate gold right now because gold hasn't really uh, done as well as people expect. People have given up. Uh, even though gold is at, uh, you know, over $1,000 an ounce. I know it's below 2011's uh, level, but it, it probably is pretty much like it was in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, just before I bought gold, I started buying it in 2002, but I wasn't really following in 1999, uh, 2000, 2001. And... Uh, Everyone was paying attention to the uh, internet bubble, the dot-com bubble. You know, that was the future. Gold was finished then as well. And the same thing uh, happening with cryptocurrencies today. Bitcoin is, is the future. Uh, Ethereum, uh, you know, gold is finished. And I'm not uh, disparaging Bitcoin or Ethereum. You know, they have done well. And they might well have a future. But... Uh, I think it's gone, the boat is uh, listing too far to one side, and people have to be careful, in my opinion. Uh, people have left, <laughs> you know, uh, there's too, uh, yeah, it's just too easy right now in the cryptocurrency space, especially for Bitcoin. And uh, yeah, and I'm not disparaging, as I said, uh, cryptocurrencies. I think actually the uh, technology, blockchain, the the ledger, you know, open ledger technology, that's a good thing going forward. But is gold finished and silver as stores of values? Uh, I don't think so. You know, 5,000 year history, uh, major central banks. I know we don't like central banks, but uh, they wouldn't hold the stuff if they didn't think it was important. So, yeah, I I'm going to read about um, gold as a revealer of falsely stated wealth today. Before I start that... Uh, let's just look at what, uh, see what the markets are doing. Well, gold and silver are basically unchanged this morning. Uh, gold is at uh, 12.75.50, uh, down about 50 cents. The high has been 12.82 and the low 12.74. Uh, still good resistance at that 12.82 level. Yesterday, I think we got up to 12.84 and it came back down. Uh, longer term, that's, uh, you know, taking the... Uh, 2011 high and the low in 2015, uh, this 1282 level is like an important Fibonacci retracement level in the longer term, and it seems to be acting as a resistance. So uh, if we're able to close above that, that would be positive. Silver uh, had a good day Wednesday in terms of gold, uh, but it's kind of stalled now, uh, which is frustrating. We're at uh, 1711. Uh, uh, ratio is still below 75, I guess. Uh, the Dow is up 29 points, 23,540. Uh, S&P 2581 up uh, just under two points. The NASDAQ uh, future, 100 futures done well. It's up a third overnight, uh, up 20 points, 62,55. Currencies, the pound has stabilized. It had a big drop yesterday. After we saw that the Bank of England has no interest in defending the currency or quashing inflation. Uh, 
Uh, so pound is at 130.65. I think the low yesterday was about 130.45 or thereabouts. And we're at cr uh, key technical uh, levels uh, in the pound. It's still on an upward trend, but right almost breaking the, the trend that we've seen from the low at 120. So if we break below 130, I think we could go further down. But have to see if it might rebound here. I'm not saying that I'm positive about the pound long term, but these fiat currencies, they just like take turns and they trade up and down among, you know, relative to each other. Euro, 116.50, down seven pips, not much there. Uh, dollar yen, uh, dollar is unchanged, 114.09. Very narrow range, 113.88 to 114.15. So, uh, and I see also the Swiss franc, dollar is trading basically one to one against the Swiss franc. Uh, I remember, <laughs> you know, having lived in Switzerland, uh, that being like, two you know one dollar used to be two swiss francs and even at the time it was uh people were complaining you know that uh, the the dollar is too weak and now it's one to one so yeah um that's uh you know out of all the fiat currencies i'd say the swiss franc is probably uh the best of the lot it's still a fiat currency i think the swiss were forced to sell a lot of their gold reserves uh they you know back in the late 90s early 2000s and ever since then, there's been a bubble in uh, real estate in Switzerland as well. And I remember prior to that, you know, from 1970 to the mid 90s, late 90s in Switzerland, uh, there's very little inflation because the currency was so strong. They had a lot of gold and um, property prices didn't really move um, in terms of dollars. They did because the Swiss franc kept going up but not in Swiss francs, but that, that has changed now. So even the Swiss weren't able to maintain their sound money, uh, you know, instincts, which is a shame, but it's still a great co country in my opinion. So let's go to this book here and uh, read about uh, gold as a revealer of falsely stated wealth. And that, you know, at the moment, I think there's a lot of falsely stated wealth out there, including... Uh, the bond market, the stock market, cryptocurrency, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah uh, the dollar. So let's read here what uh, these uh, gentlemen say. And I quote, when wealth is overstated and expectations for future wealth are unrealistic, fiat currencies depreciate. The, pre the depreciation is borne by the citizenry who are forced to lower their living standards to compensate for both personal economic management as well as the mismanagement of the affairs of state. Sounds familiar, you know, nowadays, um, according to Catherine Austin Fitz, uh, the U.S. government, the Treasury can't account. There's $21 trillion missing from the U.S. government that is unaccounted for. Uh, you know, personal debt, um, corporate debt, you know, are at... Uh, obscene levels as well so and it goes on to say financial military overextension has a social corollary in overpromised social security medicare overstated real estate equities affluence as expense runs out of control uh, guarantees to the citizen also explode as politicians seek to retain the privilege of office sounds very familiar and this was written uh, seven years ago, I think, this book. But the promises of wealth are false. The belief that ownership of real estate is a ticket to fortunes is hollowed out for what it is, a myth. And it goes on to say wealth uh, that was taken for granted certainly appears ephemeral. The amount of currency which once bought certain things no longer does. But wages have not risen along with prices. I mean, I... This is exactly what's happening here in the UK, and I'm, I'm sure it's happening everywhere else in the West. Um, and it goes on to say, um, falsely stated and assumed wealth, largely created out of the assumption of debt that cannot be borne, uh, must eventually reset at a lower level. Populations bear the restatement of wealth through the expansion of monetary aggregates, 
causing a devaluing of the national currency that denominates their wealth. This happened to all currency holders, regardless if they personally assume any debt. Gold rises because gold is a monetary proxy inversely related to a nation's currency. Uh, the burden of indebtedness is reduced along with the standard of living. Commodity prices increase. Debt deflation uh, has become currency inflation. They are one. So yeah, um, that's what ha is happening exactly right now. Uh, I know there's a lot of people frustrated about the, uh, the price of gold. But uh, they won't be able to uh, keep this forever. Um, all the debt, all the trillions and even quadrillions of uh, assets, uh, you know, derivatives, it's all uh, fictional. It's all been created out of thin air through no, uh, you know, effort, so to speak. Uh, so gold and silver, that's what they do. They bring... Uh, you know, the world, uh, society, monetary uh, world, financial world, it, it brings people back to reality. We, we Right now, the system is up in, uh, you know, cuckoo land, so to speak. So, uh, yeah, for all those who are frustrated about gold and ho those who uh, hate gold, good. That means I think we're, uh, you know... Uh, it's even more important to have <clears throat> physical gold and silver right now. And uh, yes, the stock market keeps going up. Bitcoin keeps going up. Uh, but I'm not getting distracted. I'm keeping uh, my eye on the ball. And that means holding physical gold and silver. Uh, don't trust any of these valuations uh, of uh, these paper assets and even the cryptocurrencies. Um, especially Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, Bitcoin could go to 10,000, 12,000, but um, be careful. Uh, it could drop as quickly as it's gone up. You know, we were, uh, what, 1,000 at the beginning of the year, just over 1,000. Now we're 7,000. It could very easily drop back down to 1,000 or 2,000. Am I saying it's going to do that? No. It could continue to go up, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. So if you enjoyed this video, please like share, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and you can also follow me on Twitter and on steamit.com, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.